show you, and this is a little bit unusual, and what I'm doing here is masking off the flashing on the roof, and the previous painters got overspray all over the metal flashing, and if I was just to leave that, it would look like I did that. So I painted the gables and the shakes first, and then I'm going back now, masking off the roof, spraying the flashing with a flat black paint, and I'm getting a little bit of the overspray of um, you know, the black, flat black onto the shakes, and then I'm just gonna roll back over that. And this flashing won't have overspray on it anymore, it will look brand new, and it's just an, uh, just an added touch to this house that makes it a little bit more polished. So now I'm going, after I pulled this masking, there's a little bit of overspray onto these shakes. Now I'm just using my shake color and rolling right over the top of that. And it's gonna make it look absolutely perfect. So now I've got brand new flat black looking flashing that will match the roof line. Now we're just continuing on and I always like painting my fascia and trim by hand and it just gives better penetration and better adhesion. Some people will try spraying, you know, trim and fascia, but you know, we always spray the body of the house, but we always hand do our trim. And here I'm just using a three inch Riverdale brush, a Chinex brush and a four inch roller to hand do all of our trim. Now this is a little tool that I'm uh, putting on here. It's called the Brush Buddy. And the Brush Buddy is a little um, copper gadget that makes it so you can hang your brush on your bucket so it doesn't um, sit down in your bucket. And this is a really cool tool made by another painter out there that we now have made available on our store. And an absolute must have tool, you know, if you don't wanna have your brush sitting down in the bucket. Just continue along, just working on trim right here. And this is the belly band hand cutting in around the uh, corbels and hand brushing and rolling the belly band. You can see I'm trying to do multiple things at once. I still have a hand masker with me. I've got my tool bag with me. That way I can get multiple things done at one time, one trip up the ladder. Here's just, we're cutting in the window trim and I've got high windows up here. So we're hand rolling window trim and the, the trim itself, the way the windows are, the vinyl windows, it lends me to being able to just hand cut in up against the vinyl with my brush. And once again, I do like using a Riverdale three inch angled sash Chinex bristle brush for doing exteriors with today's modern day paints that dry extremely fast. A Chinex bristle brush is a lot easier to clean up at the end of the day than any other type of filaments that you may use like polyester or nylon. 
This is kind of the fun part of painting and you don't have to wear a respirator and a mask. You're just cruising right along, just doing all the trim. One of the, the more enjoyable parts. I'd much rather paint trim than, than spray the body of the house or do any type of spraying. You can see here on the left too, we've got a pivot roof boot that's holding a, an extension ladder on this roof so we can get up there and do the fascia on that side. And it appears like that ladder is pushing up against the gutters, but it's not. Actually, it's all about two inches away. And now I've installed a, um, another product by Pivot. It's a gutter guard that makes it so I can climb up that ladder without scratching the gutters because we've already sprayed those gutters and we don't want to scratch them and we don't want to bend them. And these are two absolutely must have tools. The uh, roof boots and the gutter guard made by Pivot. They also make the ladder tool, which is helps level a ladder. And you'll see you know, that in some of my videos also. Both of these products are available in our store at store.theidahopainter.com. Because they're just tools I believe in that every painter should have, must have tools. And I know, you know, there are gonna be some people ask me, you know, why don't you use a pail hook? And, and I have tried using pail hooks in the past, but I'm a lot more comfortable and secure having my uh, cut-in bucket in my hand and holding on to the ladder at the same time. So um, it's just a practice that I've adopted. I, um, instead of relying on a pail hook to hold my bucket, I like holding it in my hand at the same, same time. Once again, more overspray on um, the flashing. So we're taking care of the flashing here at the same time. You can see I'm you know, rolling the overspray now from the flat black to uh, cure that overspray problem on the flashing. This was one of those things you kind of wonder, is the customer gonna notice? And when the customer came home, they noticed that and we're extremely thankful that we, you know, took the added time to do that. It did take a little bit of time to do, but just gives you that polished look to your final product. You can see that you've got the spray can in my tool bag. And so I always have a tool bag with me. Typically, you know, when I'm painting, spraying, especially, it just keeps a lot of different things with me. So you can see, I can climb up this ladder. I got a masker with me. I've got the spray can with me. I can um, paint the fascia. So you can accomplish multiple tasks when you're up the ladder one time. And ultimately it's uh, just gonna cause less fatigue, you know, um, at the end of the day from accomplishing multiple tasks at a time. I'm also doing touch-ups on the shakes, as you can see, during this time too, this one trip up the ladder. Here's another example. You can see a roof boot attached to the roof where I had a ladder to access that part of the roof. The ladder's been taken down now. Uh, we do have a video showing exactly how these roof boots were installed. So if you wanna see how to properly install a roof boot, that way you don't damage the roof or cause any leaks in the roof, just check that video out at the end of this video. One method you can use is to you know, if you're not up high, it's a little bit difficult to do here, but I like to sometimes run frog tape around the vinyl and then do my cut-ins. But up high here, it's really difficult to run frog tape and then 
uh, do the trim all in one um, all in one trip up the ladder. And we do spray the gutters, so we spray all of our gutters so they have a nice factory finish on them. But then the fascia underneath the gutters, we always go back and hand roll the fascia underneath because once again, it's kind of has a rough wood grain look and feel to it and spraying it alone will not give it, you know, the quality finish and the durability that it will have if you actually hand brush and roll it. Your know, ladder safety is always you know, very important. Make sure whenever you're on your six foot or four foot ladders to have your ladders always locked in place. Otherwise, you, know, you stand a really good chance of falling off that ladder if one side is locked and the other side is not locked. We're just continuing along. The house is getting close to being done as I'm moving around the house doing the trim. I'm in just reinstalling the lights. We always like to remove the lights and paint behind them. That way if the customer ever replaces the lights, it'll be painted behind there. And same with the downspouts. We always remove the downspouts so we can get the downspouts painted on all four sides and we could paint the trim that the downbout, downspouts are actually attached to. And when I remove these downspouts, they actually weren't painted behind them from the previous painters. Same with our flag pole holders. We remove all this hardware. We don't want to get anything on those. Now our numbers, they were just flat black faded. We took and painted them a completely different metallic color to make it match and go with the brand new color of the house. This is something we do at no charge to our customers just to make the, you know, the numbers look more polished and have a more polished finish and look to the final product of the house. I typically use a four inch roller and when I'm doing exteriors, I use a four inch, three eighths inch white woven roller. And that's a standard roller that I typically use for interior and exterior, probably 95% of the time. It's rare that I use you know, a different roller. And I typically like just the inexpensive four inch roller uh, frames that uh, are, are kind of disposable, but we do use them quite a few times. So I'm getting ready to paint this trim underneath the door here and just as an added insurance, I don't want to get any paint on my concrete. So I'm masking with frog tape and just hand cutting in and hand brushing this trim underneath the door. That way I'll get a nice crisp clean line along the concrete and get that trim painted using nine inch paper along with my one inch frog tape to protect that concrete. The floor mat that's sitting there, one thing that we always do is flip that floor mat over so it's upside down. That way if you accidentally did get paint on a mat like that, then you um, it would be on the bottom of the mat. Now, you know, we have in the past, this is something to be aware of, we've tossed them out in the grass, but the mat being black gets really hot and if it's a hot day, it will kill the grass, which we've actually done. So um, just a learning experience. If you don't want to have dead grass in the shape of the mat, just 
don't set that mat out in the grass. Just set it you know, away from the house, like on the driveway or on the sidewalk or someplace that, you know, is not over grass that could kill it. I do like wearing gloves, so I typically put on workman's barrier on my hands, but then I also wear gloves to protect my hands and, you know, a few of the reasons why the, your spray guns will get really hot out in the sun and that you're also grabbing extension ladders, which leave kind of a aluminum dust on your hands. Your hands will get extremely dirty, you know, throughout the day. And there's times where I have to run and do bids or meet with customers in the middle of the day. And I don't want to have, you know, paint all over my hands and have dirty hands, you know, when I'm approaching a customer. So wearing gloves is a practice that I've always um, done most of my career. And it also makes, you know, gripping your tools and your paintbrushes a lot easier and just ultimately causes less fatigue, you know, throughout the day. And, you know, if you're gonna be doing, you know, painting as a career, you know, you want to have a long, enjoyable career. So doing anything and everything you can to, you know, create less fatigue is to your benefit. Another thing you might notice on our extension ladders, I made a video on wrapping our ladder boots in plastic. And I know in that video, there was a lot of suggestions, people saying using rags and plastic has always worked really well for me. And you can watch that video, just wrapping the ladder boots in plastic. That way, you know, after the paint is dried, you, um, your ladder boots won't stick to the paint. This side right here, the, the house, you know, we sprayed this side and just the side itself was really weather beaten and sun beaten. And you can see it looks extremely dry. And I went back and sprayed this side of the house two more times. I masked it off and sprayed it, you know, to get a more even finish. And um, that's not lighting that's causing it to look like that. That's just the siding itself. And so we reshot it twice to get a an even sheen across that whole side of the house. Getting close to the end of the day, doing trim work. Didn't quite get all the trim done today, but we're gonna be coming back for our final day of painting this house, getting it all wrapped up, put back together, everything put back together, and finalize our video series up. I think this is, you know, about our sixth video doing this house, me painting solo. I had my daughter, you know, on a few occasions with me, you know, shooting some video, helping out, just moving some ladders for me here and there. But um, painting the house solo. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. So there you have it. We're Coming down to a close on this house, I'm ending today. I think I've got about another uh, day to do to finish this house up and we're gonna be wrapping up our video series after our final day. If you got any questions or comments about what I'm doing today, just leave it down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer your questions and comments. You know, if you just wanna share some tips and tricks about what you do painting a house um, versus what I do painting, this is a solo project, you know, a multi-day project. We're down like five or six days now. Hope you've enjoyed this whole video series stay tuned for our final day where I wrap this whole thing up walk you around the house and show you what it looks like hopefully you've enjoyed the video if you have give us a thumbs up give us a thumbs up don't give us a thumbs down this thumbs up would actually work better than a thumbs down don't forget hit the subscribe button the notification bell right next to it you need to hit that too like I say, it's always free and easy. It never costs you anything. It only just allows you to be emailed every time I come out with a new video. That way you get a reminder that the new video's out. And like we always say, we'll see you on our next video. Out.